In this module we examine two other commands that give you control over your processes. Those commands are NICE and NOHUP. Let's look at NICE first. What you may or may not know about running processes in Unix is that each is assigned a priority by the operating system. Now I'm using the term priority in the sense of how important the operating considers them to be running. More important processes get a larger slice of the available processing time. In other words, they run faster. A low priority program will run more slowly. I'm not talking about significantly more slowly. A very low priority process will take possibly three to five times as long to run. So if it's a very short process that takes to run, like a LS, which only takes a quarter of a second, then you're not going to notice an appreciable difference. But if it's a very long, lengthy process, like a backup job that would take an hour, then the backup job may take considerably longer, depending on how much of that hour is spent in the CPU. Anyway, the program called NICE is used to adjust this priority. In other words, you can make your programs more or less important using the NICE command. And in still other words, that means you can make your programs run faster or slower if you need to. Of course, it's important to note that if you run a process at a higher priority, its increase in speed will come at the expense of other processes running slower. The opposite of that is if you run a program at a lower priority, in other words, if you run a program slower, then the rest of the programs that are running on the system will get a greater share of the CPU and thus they will run faster. I guess that's where the word nice comes from. You can run your program slower to be nice to all the other users on the system. Anyway, uh, the priorities concerned are numbers. And minus 20, even though it's a negative number, that's the highest priority. And 19 is the lowest priority. So if you run a program with a higher number, it actually runs slower. On most Unixes, a process will start with a default priority of 10. So you can make it run slower by bumping it up towards 19, or you can make it run faster by bumping it down towards 0 and then ultimately towards negative 20. NICE is used as follows. You type in the word NICE, then you put a minus sign, and then the number that you want it to run at, the priority that you want it to run at. And then you simply type in the command, followed by its any, any arguments or options that it might have. For example, you might want to run the find program to find a particular file, and you might want to run it really quickly at the highest possible priority, which means you might want to run it with a priority of negative 20. So you type in nice, followed by a minus sign, followed by the negative 20, and that necessarily gives you two minus signs in a row, followed by the name of the program that you're trying to run, in this case, find, along with all its arguments. Alternatively, to run a program a little slower. Perhaps you've got a backup job and you don't really care how long the backup job is going to take to run. If it takes an hour or if it takes 10 hours, it doesn't really matter to you because you're about to go home. So you can be nice to the rest of the world by setting it at its lowest priority of 19, as you can see on the screen. Now, notice it's very easy to get confused with negative 19 and negative negative 19. Negative negative 19 is running at a priority of negative 19, which is one of the highest priorities that you can have, whereas just a dash followed by a 19 on the command line is actually specifying that you want to run at a priority of positive 19. I know it's very confusing, but you just recall that you must always have a minus sign in front of the priority. So if you want to find out what number it is, just pretend that the first minus sign isn't there and that will give you the priority that you're trying to run it at. Anyway, I'll give you some examples now. I'll run the ps command, and I'll run it at its lowest possible priority, which is minus 19. I'll just run ps, and it's running a little slowly, but there it goes. Now I'll do the same thing, and this time at the highest possible priority, minus minus 20. I'll run ps. Now something interesting is going to happen here that you're probably not expecting. I get permission denied. And on most Unixes, most users will get exactly this. It is not possible to increase the priority that far. Let's see if it's possible to increase the priority at all. Nice 
minus 10 PS and that works how about nice minus 9 PS and that's the next available highest priority press enter so I can run that how about nice minus 1 PS ok I can run it at a priority of 1 how about nice minus 0 PS and yes that works how about nice minus minus 1 PS I didn't type that right, I'm sorry. Nice minus minus 1 PS. OK, so I can run it at any priority except for negative numbers, which are reserved for the super users or other such people who have been given permission by the super users. So now let's move on and I'll show you the other process control in this chapter. If you recall from something I mentioned earlier in this chapter, Whenever you log out, all the processes that you have running asynchronously are automatically terminated. Well, I'll now show you a way that you can prevent that from happening. It is possible to prevent this termination, but only if you started the program by using the nohup command. Nohup, if you're interested, is short for no hangup. The way it's used is as follows. You simply put the word nohup in front of the command that you want to run you would then typically also put an ampersand on the end. For example, you might be trying to run a big backup job. And what you might be trying to do is start the backup job and then once it's running, immediately log off and go home. Now, ordinarily, the logging off part would interrupt the backup job. It would die. And so if you didn't have the no hub option, your only other option would be to leave yourself logged on overnight, which is obviously a security risk in some companies. Gladly, uh, no hub relieves us of this option. Now I'll show you how that works, but before I do, I'll just make one note. If that program is going to create any standard output, then that output obviously has to go somewhere. It can't go to the terminal because you might be logged out at the time. So where are any messages going to go? Well, they are typically written to a file called nohup.out in whatever directory you happen to start the program. Now if that's okay with you then just leave it as B but if you would like the output to go somewhere more meaningful then simply redirect the output using the greater than sign to a file or something else. Anyway let me show you an example of that. The first thing I'll do is I'll prove to you that programs do actually die when you log off. I'll say sleep 1000 and I'll run that in the background. OK, now it's running. I'll just do a PS to confirm that it's running. Yes, there it is. And now I will log off. Exit. And I'm now no longer connected to zip. So what I'll do now is I'll get rid of this window and I'll start another Telnet session and log into zip again. OK, I've done that. I'm logged in again. And I just do a PS. And I find that my sleep is not there. OK, so now I'll do the same thing again using no hub sleep 1000 ampersand and I get a little message that the output is getting appended to no hub dot out. OK, well I'm quite comfortable with that because I don't think there's going to be any output. But now I will log out again. Just type in exit and now I've logged out and same as before I will log back in again and back again and now I'll just simply do a PS and the sleep is still running. So no hub can be an extremely useful program at some times.